In 1899, the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway and their general manager Edward Watkin realised an ambitious vision to connect their own network in the north with London City in the south via a trunk route through the East Midlands. This grand and expensive project became known as the Great Central Main Line and for 70 years it transported passengers and particularly freight up and down the spine of England. Then the infamous beaching cuts of the 1960s happened and almost the entire route, nearly 100 miles of track and stations, was ripped up and lost forever. Well, all except one section. A small preservation group managed to save one little section of this once vast main line in between Leicester and Nottingham. And after another 50 years of hard work, political wrangling, blood, sweat and tears, this is their own version of Edward Watkins' vision realised. Welcome one and all to the Great Central Railway. people of the internet welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another station on the mile I'm at Loughborough today having had quite the journey to get here having set off at about 8 a.m. it's now nearly one o'clock in the afternoon I've been on about five different trains today via such places as Lymington Spa, Nuneaton and Leicester and now I'm at Loughborough but I'm not at the right Loughborough station that I need to be at so now I'm waiting for one more bus. And do you know the funny thing about this? If the topic of today's video had still been open as a fully functioning mainline as it was decades past, I'd have avoided all of that today. <laughs> as it turns out, diversions, engineering works, delays, crowded trains, none of that has stopped me getting to Loughborough. And now all that's left to do is have this rather nice ham and cheese toasty made by the folks here at the Gourmet Coffee Bar at Loughborough Station. Would recommend by the way if you're here. And um, wait for this bus. Apparently it's not exactly hard to spot. Right, here we are at the proper love session now. And it's about time I try and go and find my guest for this episode. And someone you'll recognise, the last message I got from him, is that he's queuing for food. So there's a queue for refreshments in there. Let's go take a look. There he is. Look at him there. It's Chris, he's back. How are you doing? All right. Nice, nice hat, by the way. Yeah, it's good. It's very good. How's it been? Good. Busy. Lots of trains. Lots of yeah. action lots, happening. Lots everywhere. of steam. This is what we like. When looking at the history of the Great Central Railway, it's probably best to tackle it in two parts. I mean, we are kind of dealing with 120 years worth of events. Cut me some slack here. Come on. The original Great Central Main Line, also known as the London Extension, opened in 1899 and ran officially from Nottingham, Victoria to London, Marylebone, in the process connecting up with the existing Manchester and Sheffield network of lines. Expensive and audacious, the line nevertheless fulfilled important roles and would remain the last full main line built in the UK until High Speed 1 in 2003. However, in the 1960s, the entire line became one of the biggest and most controversial victims of the beaching axe. Seen as unnecessary given the nearby Midland Main Line, the entire route was ripped up. Yep, all of it. And once all the demolition work was completed in 1969, just one section remained in between Loughborough and Leicester. And that is what forms the Great Central Railway Heritage Line we see today. The original section secured for preservation by the Main Line Preservation Group was between Loughborough Central and Leicester via the stations of Corn and Woodhouse, Rothley and Belgrave and Burstall. However, political machinations and issues such as vandalism made things especially difficult. For example, tracks were lifted and singled, and Belgrave and Burstall Station itself was demolished altogether in 1985. Nevertheless, the company now known as GCR PLC persisted, and duly started getting their just rewards for all their hard work. In 1991, a new Leicester North Station was opened near the site of the original Belgrave and Burstall Station, and in 2000, a large section of the 8.25 mile surviving route was converted back to double track running, just like the original Great Central Main Line. There's also a project to link up with another preserved section of line between Loughborough and Ruddington to the north, which could see the line doubling length to a whopping 18 miles. But that's for another day. For now, 50 years after closure, this is what the Great Central Railway looks like today. 
Given it's the headquarters of the entire Great Central Railway, it's kind of appropriate we started off our adventure at Loughborough Central. And after spending the first day of our two-day expedition running up and down the line on various steam trains, our first impressions of the place were pretty good, I'd say. Right, so we're at the northern end of the line, if I've got my geography correct. At Lugabruga, no, Loughborough, the proper one. And this is kind of, this is probably the main headquarters of the line, isn't it? Yeah. It's the main kind of running shed down there, all the locos are kind of stalled around here. This well, is the main kind of cafe. Well, you just had, I'm having a nice pint, but um, <laughs> Super. Other sugar-free fizzy drinks are available. <laughs> What's your first impression has been so far? Because we've had a, a, since getting here earlier, we've had, you may notice it's now got dark. Yeah. But, uh, busy. <laughs> it is busy, isn't it? This is the thing about the Great Central. Like, it's, I don't think it's the longest line in the country. The longest preserved line in the country. It's 8.25 miles at the moment. And it's also the only in the country with extended double track running, which makes it quite interesting because normally Heritage Railway is quite quaint. Quite sort of chill, you know, one train's sort of trundling around, then you, you stand at the station, it's very peaceful. Here, it, everything happens. Yeah, there's loads of stuff happening. You, you're just wandering around the station, then suddenly. It, it does, which is appropriate because this is an old main line. Yeah. So, in terms of replicating how it was, it's fantastic. Also, helping the busy vibe today is that there's a lot of trains running. Lots, lot of steam, which is why Chris is here. He is in London. Six, no, 16, one diesel, one DMU. There is plenty to look at here, including some some proper sort of beefy boys of steam. Some of the some of the biggest steam engines around, like the Stanier 8F, two 8 toes, a lot of wheels, and then the 9F, there's two 10, loads of wheels. Big boys, the absolute, we are in awe of the size of these absolute units. And it's quite funny, even though this is quite a double track mainline and it's busy for a heritage railway, it still has that thing of a lot of heritage lines. I've seen this with like, you know, big powerful express diesels on preserve lines before where it's like in your heyday you could haul 12 coaches or several thousand tons of wagons and everything and now you're hauling five coaches for 25 miles an hour up and eight okay yeah <laughs> it's a bit like watching Usain Bolt sort of walk jog. slowly yeah. <laughs> sort of jog lightly up the road but it is still very nice around here I, love, I, I kind of love the atmosphere it has a sort of intensity like you said that a lot of heritage lines don't have and we are waiting for a we are waiting for a non-stop express train called by the Great West End. Which is the main reason you're here, because... <laughs> I was going to say, this didn't really come across uh, in the last video you appeared in, because obviously you appeared in the HST the Dawlish video. We were in the right location for you, not quite the right rolling stock. You are a big steam man, aren't you? You like your kettles, you like your tea. So... <laughs> Not You've spent all day calling not. diesel sheds, no. so this is my revenge. There is one locomotive that's not strictly location accurate. You get this with Heritage Railway sometimes, like Heritage Loco, sometimes they'll find whatever home they can get, even if it wasn't where they worked in their operational life. So, there is a Great Western Railway steam loco here. A bit far away from home, but you don't mind. Because it's a haul, it's with a slack haul, and yeah, it's going to be epic. As night fell, we retired to our guest house in the nearby village of Thurkeston, not too far away from the Great Central Railway itself. Which meant that when we woke up the next morning, we were treated to an absolutely spectacular sight. After that picture postcard worthy view, we headed back to the railway and back to Loughborough Central to really start exploring the Great Central Railway, beginning with a look around the vast locomotive works and shed at Loughborough Central itself, as well as the Grade 2 listed signal box, the only one surviving from the original Great Central Main Line of 1899. Being the headquarters of the line, the yard gets pretty busy with locos, as you can probably tell from the following footage. I would start talking, but we are about to get photobombed by a train. No, no, don't worry, take your time. <laughs> we, we just want to vlog here. Do you know what? I don't think many other YouTube vloggers have to deal with being photobombed by a steam locomotive. We have just been to the shed at Loughborough and it's pretty impressive three road shed and there's yeah the, the thing is like there's so many locos in action today and so many more parked up at the various stations on the line you think well that's got to be it and then you go in there and there's even more waiting to be finished waiting to be unleashed once again and the weirdest thing about it is that shed it won't be there soon it won't yeah because 
the whole grand plan, we were speaking to a few chaps on the platform here at Loughborough, with a beautiful engage model of how the extension to Ruddington is going to look, but that is kind of where the, the that's kind of where the line used to go. So when it was shut, they built the shed there, and now it looks like they're going to try and reopen that bit. They kind of have to loop the shed. Being photobombed again. No, seriously. Anyone else want to get in shot? <laughs> anyone else? Yeah, there you go. As soon as the camera comes out, they all want to get on TV, don't they? Yeah. I, I think that's what really gets me about this line. It's the scale of everything. We used to heritage lines being quite quaint and, and small, but it's still very impressive what they're able to do. You see the amount of locos at any given line. It's like, this is run by volunteers. Yeah. How do you do it? This TV. is just, this is like its own mainline rail company with the amount of stock and coaches and everything that is running here. Should we go check out some other bits of it? Yeah. We've spent a lot of time at Loughborough so far. Should we go check out Corn and Woodhouse? Yeah. Let's, let's go. go. I'm, I'm leaving now. <laughs> He's running for the train, let's go. Loughborough Central also nicely demonstrates a neat feature of the Great Central Railway. Each station is restored to the visual style of a certain period in the original line's history. Loughborough represents the 1950s under British Railways, Corn and Woodhouse the 1940s under the London North Eastern Railway and during World War II, Rothley the pre-World War I look, 1912 to be specific, and Leicester North goes for the 1960s British Railways look. And speaking of Corn and Woodhouse though, that's the first intermediate stop on the line as we head southbound. Okay, so we're now one stop up the line at Corn and Woodhouse Station, and uh, it's just started raining, so we've yeah. taken cover in the beer tent, which is usefully here, which is very nice. Uh, I mean, I'm sampling the beer. I, I have no. Because you don't drink it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Along with an excellent beer selection, I have to say, this is, in keeping with the theme of the rest of the line, this is a busy intermediate station, isn't it? Like, a lot of times intermediate stations on preserve lines are just sort of there as an extra place to stop at, and there's a little passing point. Yeah, Sorry. a little passing point or something, but this is, I mean, this is one of the original stations on the line. This was opened in 1899 along with everything else. And here's where we get to mention the unique design that was all along the entire Great Central Main Line. Island platforms. Yeah, island platforms everywhere apparently. Yeah, we've, someone we've, told me yesterday. We picked, yeah, yeah, we've, someone mentioned this to us yesterday. And we were like, oh yeah. You don't see it as much on the main line. And, and really, uh, the, the, the one example I can think of is on the Northern Line in London. The reason why? Apparently it's more efficient for both the staff and costs, rather than building two separate platforms, build one in the middle, there you go. Easy. Yep, and uh, this station, uh, as each station on the line has a period theme, this one, appropriately, has a 1940s wartime theme, because apparently this was a very important station in the 1940s. There were extra sidings added in for freight, because the fact it was kind of in the middle of the countryside, further away from the city, further away from German bombers. All the important supplies that the Germans thought would be in the cities or in other busier places, they were hiding around here. Yeah. Very smart. And there was also apparently a room for Enigma code breaking machines around here as well. So it was all going on around here. No wonder they decided to replicate 1940s as this era. Yeah, we're going to hide from the rain. I'm going to finish this. And then we're going to head on to Rothley. Rothley? Is it Rothley or Rothley? Uh, the locals tell us it's Rothley. On the way to Rothley Station, there's plenty to see out the train windows. From the beautiful Switzerland Reservoir to the recently opened Switzerland siding section of the same name and the work in progress branch line down to the Mount Sorrel quarries. And then at Rothley Station itself, we took the chance to take shelter from the rain and warm up with a cup of tea in one of the old good sheds. You might have noticed this already, but this hasn't exactly been the warmest of days. So cold. <laughs> As you can tell, Chris is a bit cold. I'm a bit covered in rain. And um, we're at Rothley Station. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Rothley Station. It's great. It's a bit wet. It's a bit, yeah. So we're at the next stop up the line, which is Rothley Station. We've been told that that is the correct way to pronounce it. As opposed to, you know, Rothley. Rothley. Yeah, we got and, told uh, off. Yeah, we got told off for that <laughs> by our local host. Chris, sit rep, how are you doing? Cold, wet. Ask me how I'm doing. Cold and wet. For the most part, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, a lot of rain is now happening. We're still pressing on, We're not letting it ruin our day here. In fact, it's kind of adding a an atmosphere to the day, I think. Is it? <laughs> Chris is not agreeing with me on that one. But we are at Rothley Station, which is where we kind of, well, this is where, it, in the nearby village of Thurkeston, is where we stayed last night. And to compare it to Corn Woodhouse, which was modelled in the 1940s, or made to look like it, this is modelled in Edwardian times, specifically 1912, so just before the First World War. There's the uh, tea shop that we've just sampled, which was an old freight 
uh, shed sort of thing. And you can tell where the rest of the freight yard used to be because there's a car park. That's yeah. always a giveaway. Top tip, if you're at any rail station and you see a car park, especially in a sort of triangular shape, Good prob station. there was probably a good station there. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely period signal box over there, which I believe is from another station on the original Great Central Main Line. So it's not an original Rothley station signal box, but it's from this line and ergo it fits and it's all good. It, it's now raining even more. So um, we, we'd best make our way to Leicester North, shall we? Yeah. The double track section of line ends just south of Rothley Station. The final leg of the journey takes us to Leicester North, a station that on first glance doesn't appear to offer much to explore, not from a historical standpoint anyway. But the mere fact this station even exists in the shadows of the lost site of the original Belgrave and Burstall station is quite the miracle in itself. You right there? Cold. <laughs> right, so we have made it to the southernmost end of the line at Leicester North. Which is a little bit confusing. Not actually really Leicester North. Yeah, there's quite a few interesting things about this station, quite a few confusing things. I mean, chief among which, we've got some teddy bears for company. We are there. Eat. Is we are there. Now, this is the only non original station on the entire Great Central Railway. There's two ways you can tell that. Number one, it's not an island platform. Yeah. Number two, if you look at the end of the platforms and you look at the road bridge, you will see very clearly a bricked up doorway which is the giveaway of where the original station was, which was called Belgrave and Burstall. Basically, Leicester North existing is kind of a bit of a miracle in itself. As much as people try to save Belgrave and Burstall for various machinations that will just sum up with the phrase politics with jazz hands, those are very important. It ended up all being demolished and knocked down and the track was lifted and uh, people were very determined from there not to be a station here anymore. The Great Central Railway thought otherwise, so they said if they can't rebuild the Belgrave and Burstall station, let's just build a whole new one right here. And they have, which is pretty incredible, I've got to say. I'm always incredibly chuffed when a, a heritage line not only restores and preserves what was already there, but rebuilds and builds anew. I like what they've done with the place. Little platform here, booking office, and they built it in the same style as the rest of the line, trying to stay true to that original Great Central style. Oh, and uh, oh, yeah. uh, the bears are being confiscated. Oh no! They're fed up with the rain, boys. Uh, they're bored of listening to us. Maybe it was the darkness descending and the quietness of waiting for the last train of the day in the dark and the gloom, but Leicester North almost had a haunting feeling to it, as if the ghosts it represented were far greater than the station and site itself. And sometimes maybe that's the most powerful part of a heritage railway, what it represents, what has been saved, what has been built anew, and what indeed has been lost. And that concluded our odyssey on the Great Central Railway. So it was time to head back to Loughborough Central and start our lengthy and fairly complicated journey home via the other Loughborough station. We've made it as far back as Leamington Spa, we can confirm that. And now my train's arriving and Chris has got to wait a little bit longer. So Chris, how's it real? Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Yeah. Thank you for planning it really, it was kind of his idea. So blame him. So uh, anyway, I've now got to get on this to go back to the original terminus of the Great Central Main Line, London Marylebone. Let's go. Yeah. So after all that, back in London now and appropriately I'm at the southern end of the old Great Central Main Line. London Marylebone. This is where the Great Central Main Line completed its London extension. How appropriate that this is where our adventure ends this weekend. I just wanted to kind of have a little reflection about the adventure this weekend because I kind of feel, I don't know, it almost feels a bit bittersweet because on the one hand there's kind of a conception that the whole beaching cut in the 60s and it was the big nasty man that came and closed down all these quaint railway lines. The fact that an entire main line, especially one that could be of such core importance right now, especially now we're discussing HS2 is now becoming a thing, the fact that an entire main line was part of the beaching cuts in the 60s that were Far more than just one man that didn't like a load of railways. We're talking about some sort of big political movement here, including 
politicians with vested interests in road building. The whole subject of the beating cuts is worthy of about a billion books in its own right. But for me, seeing the Great Central Railway and what's left of it, what isn't, and even stories like how the fact that Leicester North became a thing and the fact that the line had already been run down and then after it was shut, British Railway still didn't want anything to do with it. We're trying to stop them being preserved. They didn't want the lines to still be open. It's like, it's just so infuriating and so depressing in some ways. But on the other hand, I've just spent a weekend at part of the surviving section of the Great Central Main Line. And it's like what I said when I was at the Spa Valley Railway. The British Railways decided this entire main line was surplus to requirements. They didn't want it, they didn't need it. They didn't want anyone else to have it, but guess what? Folks at the Great Central Railway took it over. That bit is theirs now. And not only are they doing an incredible job preserving the history and running that section of line as well as they are, I can't wait to see the completion of the extended section. It will take it up to the full 18 miles. We probably will never ever see the entire Great Central Main Line reopened ever again. But the fact that so much of it has been saved already and more may still yet be revived, that makes me smile again. These stories like that and it's meeting the people that run railways like the Great Central Railway, just having a fabulous weekend as I have, they make me smile again. And make me like trains again, because uh, I do kind of like trains. You may, have, you may have guessed this by now. Anyway, I'm rambling and I've taken up quite enough of your time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my adventures with the Great Central Railway. And I will see you guys again sometime soon on another station, another mile. I don't know how this episode's gonna turn out, but the outtakes are gonna be lit. <laughs> no, that's not a steam train you can hear in the background. It's me, being ill. One of us was infected until the day before we came up. One of us is still infected. In fact, no, I'm still infected as well. I can't get in. <laughs> you can't get in? Giggity. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting the museum exhibit here. I was gonna start talking at us. As I think. Uh, no, it's no, just no, a car. It's a Skoda, <laughs> not a train. It's a Skoda. <laughs> <Well, fa> fail. <laughs> Absolute fail. I mean, I was hoping you'd. Stop. D Stupid unit. Right, so we have made it to the southernmost end of the line. <coughs> and cut. <coughs> and have died. And that's it, it's all over.